Ooh, it's a gigantic one because it's a package from China and we're going to have a lot of fun. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So recently I picked up three different game box systems from one store and this one was called the G60. And the reason I picked this up, I wanted to review this freaking thing for a very long time. And I must say that I waited a very long time. And the reason why is very simple. These things are very expensive and I had no idea what to get. There was no specifications whatsoever. It came with a shitty remote. I can tell you that like the most basic remote you can think of. Because this device, like I say, was quite of a disappointment. So the seller did warn me like for this particular console that it came only in the Chinese language. So yeah, it's going to be a challenge setting it up and what you can do with it. But I will show you with my capture card, of course. But let's check what's inside the box. Okay, so first of all, here we're going to get the game console itself or the TV box. Let's remove the plastic. Fantastic. The power supply is a basic power supply, nothing really special. Five volts and it's a 12 ohm milliamp. It also comes with a cable for multiple ports or a multi hub for the USB. I think it is old school man, like 2.0. The reason why, because we only have a couple of USB ports on the back. Interesting that this thing does support AV out. So if you want to go all retro mode, you can do that. HDMI function and HDMI cable. And we're going to get two controllers. Hmm. Let me see what are we going to get inside because this is quite interesting always to see what kind of controls that we're going to get. Oh, damn it. Let's give her a silver scissor. Okay, so let's open it up and let's see what kind of shitty or maybe good controllers we're going to get today. Hmm, is this especially for this system? It seems to be that these are like the original controls that came with the system. Do get the normal rubbery joysticks. Smelly test. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, this one is chemical. This is not really D-pad, but a horrible D-pad we have seen before. It's just a bulky, really cheap. PlayStation 2 knockoff controller and it comes with a very long cable. But let's take a close look at the system itself. The G60. Oh boy. And I can tell like this thing is super lightweight and I can smell it over here. Holy shit. <laughs> it smells like burnt plastic man. This is one chemical collection of pieces of hardware. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Okay, so let's take a close look at the back itself. So it's a surprise that we have an on and off switch. That's something that you don't see very often on these devices. The input for the power supply was on 5 volt. Input for RG45 Ethernet connection to USB ports. That's the reason why we're going to get an USB hub. And of course we're going to get the analog out. That's something you don't see very often with new generation boxes. But let's power it on and let's see what we're going to get with the menu itself. Okay, so when you're looking at the software itself, this is just a serious problem because it's so bad, it's so old, there is not a lot of stuff we can do with it and even PlayStation 1 doesn't run that great. The controller, I must say the shape itself, I do like it, but the D-pad is not really a D-pad and it's another shitty controller, so we're not going to talk about it more. So let's do a quick teardown. I wanted to see what is inside this bad boy. This is just, you would say the power of tower but there was nothing powerful about it. All right, so let's take a close look at the menu to begin with. So what I noticed, like everything is not in English and he did warn me before, before even buying it. That was really nice of him, uh, but still I wanted to check it out what it is. And the main problem I'm having with this, there is no Play Store. And sometimes there is a Play Store, but the Android version they are running is so old that it's not really recommended using it. But overall, we can always try to sideload, so everything is here, like the file manager is here, so we can basically sideload APK files if you want to. But then overall, like, it's a really nice layout. Here we can add some quick shortcuts if you want to. But if you want to play a game from the box itself, internet connection is required. And the weird thing is, like, these weird motion games I have no controller for, they boot up, but all the other ones don't boot it up. And that is a bit of a problem. But let's play these games later because this is quite awful. Alright, so Ida 64 time. The system, it is a rock chip, model number G60. It's, it's a really old rock chip. I think they are using newer models now in handhelds. 
But then overall what we're going to get is an Aaron Gore-Tex A7 only in 1 GHz. Holy crap that is really slow, like the typical machines are running around 1.5. And Mali 400 MP, nowadays we're having around Mali 450 with the Super Console X. And here we're having the option, this is a rooted device, but Android version 4.4.4. So this is really old, prehistoric old. So even if you're going to get managed to install an 8-bit or 16-bit game, it will run just fine on this piece of hardware, simply because this is an old piece of hardware, but it is still capable of running these old two-dimensional games. But when you're looking at the device and you play some two-dimensional games, it will run just fine, but installing it is the biggest problem, I can tell you that. But installing pieces of software in this is just a freaking nightmare, because especially it's a really old Android version. And you will notice, when you're trying to get some higher end stuff to run, it will not run great. The sound delay can be fixed, but I can say that the glitching is getting worse, and it also counts for the frame rate. Round 1 because of the low spec, we cannot even run PlayStation 1 decently, so you can say that everything like Sega Dreamcast, Sega Center, and GameCube, you name it, it's just out of the question. In my opinion, this box is pretty damn pointless. And especially nowadays that we're having so many options when it comes to low-end stuff. Because Super Console X or another device that is not expensive can run PlayStation 1 just fine. Oh, I have no idea how to disassemble it. So the first thing that we're going to do is remove the two parkas. That is the obvious thing to do, of course. Because I'm just super curious what are we going to get on the inside. I think it's like a tiny PCB and nothing else. Let's see if we can remove some parts. I think we need something to pry it open, yeah. And yep, I was right. Two screws need to be removed and then we can pry it open. Alright, so let's see what we're going to get on this side. You're having this tiny PCB and the reason why, because this is needed for the LID and the unit that we're going to need for the remote. Oh, by the way, I completely forget to talk about the remote because the remote is really old school. We need to put the front of it because it's not working at all. Ah, so here we're having the PCB itself. What an interesting, really interesting piece of hardware. And the reason I'm saying it like that, so first of all, this is the Rockchip RK3128. Fun fact, like this, you see this often in handhelds nowadays. But you can see this construction, it's, it's just completely waste of space because this makes no sense. Let's put it this way. So an overall, like the construction is something you don't see very often most of the time now we're going to get these very tiny flat boxes there is a way to disassemble this and that is what we're going to try today also comes with a metal plate i think they want to just give it some extra weight so that it's going to stay like this holy crap i was there thinking hey maybe this is for the cooling element but nope it's just a piece of metal that they put at the bottom otherwise it would even <laughs> Stand, yeah, it would stand, but it's it's just so freaking cheap plastic. <laughs> oh, okay, so what we're going to do is remove the three screws over here, and I think I can just slide it out because I want to give you a quick overview of the PCB itself. To be honest, I really enjoy disassembling these devices. Ah, there we go. I think that was the on and off switch. Yep, it is. Oh, let's see if there's going to be any cooling whatsoever. Not really. So this is just the bracket that holds the PCB or the main board in place. The cord that goes to the front PCB. And this is the Wi-Fi antenna or what is left of it because it's all sticky. Okay, so let's see. Interesting, interesting. So what you're going to get over here, this is the rock chip, what I already mentioned. So far I know like nowadays they are using this chip in handhelds itself. So it got a lot of potential in the handhelds. I think this is just an issue of having horrible pieces of software running on this hardware. 
Here we're going to get the RAM chips in total. I think if I recall it correctly, it was one gigabyte. Here we can see the production date. The production date is even version 1.1 and the production date is 2018-03-23. So this is just a really prehistoric piece of technology already. So when making this video, this thing is freaking three years old, a little bit more than three years. So that's it folks, that's what you're going to get on the inside, there's not even cooling on it, it's just one freaking joke if you ask me. So maybe back in the day, that was a really cool piece of hardware, but now, in 2021 when making this video, it's just a waste of money. Yeah, I paid way too much for this, and even if I needed to pay 30 bucks for it, it's way too much, because this is just... This is just e-waste in my opinion, or they need me to light and completely reflash like an MULEC support for this device. That would be cool, but still, it doesn't have enough juice to run like the higher end systems like PlayStation 1. Hmm, nowadays we're having like a $38 stick itself from Android that runs PlayStation 1. So you know what I'm going to say with this, like, I will find some positive things about it, but in the end, it's just a waste of money. I want to thank you for watching, consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become one of the Wicked family, and I will see you in the next video.